It's college football season, which means you need the unbeatable coverage of Sling TV starting at just $35 a month. Sling has all the big games on all the biggest channels like ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN3, Fox, Big Ten Network, ACC Network, SEC Network, all for the best price. You can stream on any device. You can record up to 50 hours with your included DVR space, and you can pause or change your service at any time. Check out Sling.com for special offers. Sling, the live TV you love at a price you'll love. Try it today. Welcome to the Andy Staples Show presented by Sling and talking about television. Your what to watch for this week presented by Sling. A bunch of TV deals. And we have Nicole Auerbach on who wrote an incredible story in The Athletic on Thursday explaining how all of this came to pass with the Big Ten. Seven years, eight billion dollars. <laughs> Yeah, billion with a B. Uh, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, Andy. And it's also, I know we talked about this last week because, you know, we were able to confirm the reporting, but it's still pretty stunning to see a deal like this, to think about ESPN not broadcasting Big Ten home football and basketball games, to start to think about what this is actually going to feel like, Fox at noon, CBS at 3.30, NBC at night. I think it's going to feel like a Sunday when we're so used to just flipping around to different channels to watch NFL games. We're going to do that with Big Ten football. So it's all done. Peacock's going to be the streaming partner. Eight exclusive games to Peacock each year. Four will be conference games. Four will be non-conference games. And then, you know, I know that there are, this is mostly a football show, but I put the basketball inventory in there as well. A lot of basketball games going to Peacock as well. So I think that might be where we feel the streaming the most. It might be once we get to basketball season. But I, I, really interesting, a lot of money, and um, you know, uh, some really big national networks. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. That that was what struck me the most is, is Kevin Warren told you that they were trying to make it feel like the NFL, where each of those networks is promoting the other network. Like if you watch an NFL Sunday – Fox will promote games that are coming on CBS or that are coming on NBC later that night or that are coming on ESPN on Monday. And they have to because the NFL makes them. And I'm sure they don't really want to, but it's it's part of the ecosystem. And now they've created that ecosystem in the Big Ten. Yeah, I thought that was actually really interesting. I talked to CBS sports chairman, uh, Sean McManus, and he made that point exactly. He was like, it was almost as if he was talking about a bunch of CBS properties leading into each other. The way he was saying, this is unprecedented. You know, we're, they're going to cross program and cross promote all their stuff. And then we're going to like Fox will be talking about the next game coming on CBS, CBS, the next game coming on NBC. Like it's just going to be nonstop all day. And it really does feel like the NFL where everyone has their piece of the puzzle that they prioritize, that they build around, but they know that they, are working essentially alongside their competitors for the overall package. I think it's interesting too, if you think about it this way, and this is partly why everyone in the big 10 is so excited. Obviously they saw the dollar figures too, but okay. So, so Fox is going to get the best games. So therefore, you know that the game that Fox is putting on is going to be their priority that day. Then, you know, that CBS thinks that the game they're putting on at three 30 is their biggest priority of the day. And then Depends on the week, but NBC is going to think that the game they're putting on from the Big Ten could be their priority of the week. Depends who Notre Dame is playing, right? So, you know, it's it's going to feel nice, I think, for the Big Ten to be like, oh, everyone is treating us like we are the biggest deal in town. And they're, they're spending the money to do that, so they're, they're backing it up. But, you know, it's, it, it's kind of crazy to think about this. I, I really think that it's going to be something that a lot of other sports leagues are going to watch because – the Big Ten is putting its programming on the easiest to find channels for football. Like these audiences are going to be really, really big for these games. Well, that's the other thing. You don't have to worry about who has subscribed to what streaming service, who has cable, who cut the cord, whatever. All these are on rabbit ears if you want them for the most part. Yep. And that's that's pretty big. because, And we're talking about the biggest games. Big Ten Network's still going to have its supply of games as well. And... You know, it, it's, it is very interesting because it does feel like a, a completely different model. Now, you still got to get people to change channels, which is interesting. I, as I've studied those ratings, it, it, I find it fascinating. 
the broadcast networks do tend to kind of make their own gravy on cable. You people go to ESPN and they leave it on ESPN. Or if you go to sports bar, they go on ESPN and won't take it off ESPN unless you specifically say I need ABC or I need CBS. And so we'll see what happens with that. But I mean, they've got big brands on the networks with the biggest reach. That seems yep. like it's going to be pretty easy to find what you need. It also feels like a shift because I think in past media deals, we've looked at how many games are on ESPN or BTN or FS1, right? They're trying to build up other channels that are part of bigger networks, right? And bigger media companies. This is just saying we're going for biggest audience and then we have a streaming package. So it's like there, there's not a lot of middle ground. Yes, there's going to be games on FS1 and BTN. So maybe that does count as middle ground. There's there's going to be a small Friday night package, which is similar to how it is now. Um, so you're going to see those different pieces. It's funny when you're saying like, oh, people are going to have to change their channels. I was thinking I'm looking at my my little remote right here. Yep. And if I just if I hold this down and I just tell it that I want. Oh, 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 oh. State, it'll just go yes go. you don't even have to think about where the channel that is are. and that's pretty um, much any tv again, built I, in the last three years yeah yes so i think that big 10 fans are going to go where the games are i think they're going to find them you know there, there could be some friction around the peacock games i again i think it might be more of an issue for basketball because there's just going to be a lot more there well i thought that cbs definitely made the biggest splash in its announcement mm. with the tweet that it sent out. And uh, we're going to play that for you right now. If you're listening on the podcast, well, you're going to hear something familiar. But if you're watching on the YouTube stream, you will see two things that, depending on what age you are, may not feel like they go together. Now, Nicole, what does that song make you think yep. of? Uh, well, that was, first of all, very jarring. I hadn't watched it yet. So this is like my pure reaction. You so know, that song was over, over images ball. of Big Ten stadiums. Of the and Big horseshoe, Ten of Ohio State. But, I mean, that made me think of the SEC. And yes. you, I think they did this because of you. You were the first person who pointed out that they would keep the song and that they would do this with the Big Ten. So I actually blame you for that tweet, <laughs> with their announcement. Maybe, maybe, maybe the folks at, at CVS decided that they knew it would press. The, I, I know they did. They knew it would press a button because talking to people mm -hmm. in the TV industry and talking to people in the SEC, there's no love lost between those two parties. And it goes back a ways. It basically goes back to when the SEC added Texas A&M and Missouri ESPN redid its deal and created the SEC network. And they went to CBS and said, Hey, you want to redo your deal? And CBS like, nah, we're good. We're going to pay 55 million bucks a year for the best SEC game of the week for the next, at that point, the next nine or 10 years. And they're like, we're good. And the SEC is like, okay, we're so doing business with you. Again. So, so here, here's my question on, on that. So Sean McManus, CBS sports chairman tells me, Okay, listen, ever since we, you know, kind of are, are out of the mix for the SEC, Big Ten rights was a priority. Who is to blame or credit? I don't know. Is it is it that, that SEC didn't want to continue on with CBS? They wanted to go to ESPN exclusively? Did CBS try? Like, what? walk me through the dynamics of that relationship. I think CBS made an effort. I don't think the SEC wanted to be back in business with CBS. I think there was lingering bad feelings about that. And I think they were going to take the opportunity to take that elsewhere if they could, because they felt like CBS took advantage of a deal that was made basically right after an economic collapse. It was after the subprime mortgage crisis. It was, you know, the, the economy had gone very badly in 2008. That deal gets made. And I think the SEC figured, oh, change the membership and they will, they will modernize that deal. And they just, they wouldn't. And it, it looked, if you're CBS, why would you? You have the best deal in televised sports. Right. So this is this is like reminds me of people who think that ESPN is just gonna 
out of the goodness of its own heart, like give the ACC school mo- schools more money, like right, or, or, pro- right? or like, prop just, up the Pac-12 or the Big 12. Yeah, right. Why? Why? Um, when you negotiate a deal, you get to see out the terms of that deal. You get mm-hmm. to pay if it's a good deal for you. You get to pay less money than it's probably worth. Or if you negotiated poorly, I mean, how many times do schools have to pay out buyouts for deals that they made that were bad? That's Correct. it's 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 just part of a contract, right? And so, um, I I get it. Uh, listen, we have had a lot of conversations on this show over the last year about hurt feelings, emotions, pettiness. Like this is absolutely yep. a driving force in college sports and in sports and in business, but. You know, it, it is very interesting. I mean, I think people want to see what the relationship between the Big Ten and ESPN is coming out of this because y- you are splintering some of these relationships that have been there for a long time. And to the point, just to put a bow on it, on the, the SEC on CBS front, SEC is going to be on CBS next year. And so, mm-hmm. again, you can read on The Athletic, but there is going to be a smaller package of Big Ten games. There's going to be seven instead of 15. And the way that it was described to me was there will be Big Ten games the first couple weeks of the season when there's no SEC games. They think that they'll be able to put some games at noon when Fox is not broadcasting a Big Ten game. They think that there will be windows to do that. So there will be a presence on CBS, even though they are obviously fulfilling that last year of the SEC deal. Yeah, and it'll be Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson, directed by Craig Silver, the same song. It will look on CBS because I the CBS SEC game had a look and feel that did like people don't understand like different networks have different game personalities and and have different actually in some networks they want different looks for different time slots they want the same look and feel that you got with the SEC on CBS with the Big Ten on CBS they want it to feel like the biggest thing in the world and that crew knows how to do yeah. that. So what do you think the NBC feel is going to be? Because the only NBC Sunny night NFL. they really have is, okay. And I think they're going to call it, what are they going to call it? Big 10 Saturday or Big, Saturday, Big 10 Saturday night? J- does Jack Collinsworth have to slide in next to Jason Garrett? I, I, I don't know. I mean, well, I, I guess he'll I be doing like Notre Dame. Should, <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like they should probably not have Notre Dame grads for, for the Big 10 <laughs> broadcast, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I, it's going to be really interesting because like some of the commitment that, from these these leagues, especially NBC, is like they're they're beefing it up. Like the, this is a big commitment from these conferences, and obviously the CBS is going to be paying a lot more for these games. And I think too, and this is something else I asked Kevin Warren, but is there the expectation that these are going to be media companies that bid on an expanded playoff? And I would think the expectation is yes. He said he hopes One would so. Hope. Yeah, but. You know, I mean, I think that this certainly signals like they wanted to become bigger players in college football and they're doing that. Yeah, it, it is going to be fascinating to see how how viewership changes, because while they're saying, hey, you're going to stay the best SEC game is going to be on ABC now. Like people are still going to go watch that, but they will have a choice. Now, what's interesting about the Big Ten and different between the Big Ten and the SEC, the way the SEC works now with CBS the SEC deal with CBS gives them first choice. I think all but one week, basically. And so they are picking what they consider to be the best game 11 days or six days out. And they're putting that on at 3.30. That's not how the Big Ten has done its deals previously. No. The Big Ten has a draft with the, the networks that are that are contracted. And this network has the first, second, fifth, sixth, eighth, ninth pick. And this next network has the second, third, you know, 10th, 11th pick. And so you're going to see the best game kind of hop around. Like Ohio State Michigan is going to be big noon Saturday on Fox. But some of those other games are going to get hopped to CBS and NBC. Yes. So I think the way to think about that is like Fox will have the best, the pick of the game of the year. So that's, you know, Michigan, Ohio State. But on a week to week basis, there will be different, companies that get the first pick um and again you're seeing like this is nbc and cbs are spending a lot of money 350 mm-hmm. million dollars per year they're gonna get some really good games on their network but yes it's a totally different process the draft is actually really fascinating i sort of love the idea it's like a very sportsy thing to do for sports networks um and so that's gonna be absolutely a piece of it but nbc and 
CBS are going to get some really big games. And there's obviously a lot of brands in the Big Ten that are big draws. I mean, Penn State is. You can mm-hmm. Penn State, Ohio State, right? Like, that's not going to be the first overall pick. But it, theoretically, you know, people well, are going to want it, that game. Like Michigan State and Wisconsin are huge draws. They yeah. that's, the, that's the power of the Big Ten. I mean, you, you're talking about massive state universities, huge enrollments, huge alumni populations – you go they go very deep and that's that is why the big 10 and the sec are where they are right now is they are they go seven eight deep of schools like where where people see oh that team is on i would like to watch that team even though i did not go to that school and and michigan's gonna play the whole schedule and penn state's gonna play the whole schedule scott's gonna play i mean you, you know you're you're still gonna draw and so that's why i remember someone put it to me like this Last year, it was during the CFP uh, expansion, will they, won't they process. And they were just saying, you know, if you're looking for as close to a sure thing as you can, if you're a media company, it's the Big Ten rights. Because you know they're going to draw well. You know the audiences and the markets that you're going into. And if you're just not sure, you know, what what the rest of this is going to look like, what other conferences are going to look like, you want to big on bid on the Big Ten because right. this is a sure thing. And again, the pl- expanded playoff is gonna is gonna do that. I think you know, you can certainly see how Kevin Warren shaped this deal and think that's what he's envisioning for the playoff because he's been the one talking about multiple networks, multiple partners, well, different rounds, an NFL model. And they sold the the Big Ten championship like the NFL sells the Super Bowl. Yeah, this was not so one network got years, all of them. Seven years, four of them go to Fox. And then is it, it's two CBS, one NBC. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And I, that I had not even thought about before. And when I read that, I was like, oh, wow, this, they really did completely model this after the, the way the NFL sells its rights. Yeah. And again, if you have postseason rights, you are incentivized to cover that sport, cover that league mm-hmm. really well, 365 days of the year, because you're essentially, every time you mention it, Every time you cross promote, every time you broadcast a game, you are advertising for that event that you have. So it's 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 very smart, right? And that's that's what is missing in college football from the postseason, where the postseason is owned by one entity. There's no incentive for Fox or CBS or NBC to promote the postseason in college football as it stands. I imagine next time around, that's going to be very different. Here's another interesting piece that I thought once I was looking over the inventory, which I finally saw it. All of the games that CBS gets, basketball and football, are on big CBS. No CBS Sports Network. Everything everything is going to be huge audiences. They're going to have some more basketball games. They're going to have, um, obviously, more football, especially starting in 2024. But nothing is getting relegated to to CBS Sports Network. And, And honestly, same with NBC. It's either NBC or it's Peacock. There is nothing that's going to well, other that, that's, channels. They had the leverage to demand that because yeah. let's, let's say you're CBS and you're like, well, we want to put this many games on CBS Sports Network. Then the Big Ten could just say, no, we'll just give those to Fox or we'll give those to NBC or we'll give those to ESPN. And that's the power of having all of your rights to sell at once. And I, I had to write about this in The Athletic today because – we kept getting the question, how did the SEC get in a position where it's behind money-wise? And the answer is it's always been a little bit behind the Big Ten in terms of television revenue. But this gap will widen. And the big reason why it'll widen is the SEC has not been able to sell all of its rights at once since 2008 and will not be able to do it again until 2034. At that point, the Big Ten will have sold all its rights on three separate occasions. Yep, I think that's an incredibly important note. This is a seven, these are seven year deals. So they will come up again before the SEC goes to market again. And I guarantee that that is strategic. That is oh, on purpose. Of course. I mean, and I think, I think we're also seeing as we're now the Pac 12, you know, they open their rights negotiations early. I don't think anyone's going to do really long deals. Everyone's seen what happened with the ACC. They're locked in. They did a 20-year deal, and they were going to watch all of these other leagues jump them in annual revenue and the payouts per school. No one's going to lock themselves into something like this. And also, I, honestly, in the Pac-12 and just sort of the state of college sports, I don't think you would get people to agree to lock into something that long. Well, and I think it was a case of everybody believing in the whole idea of a bubble. 
of a rights bubble that was going to pop and people weren't going to pay for this stuff anymore. Jim Delaney, who was the former commissioner of the Big Ten, said he didn't believe in that bubble. He believed that, that live sports would continue to become more valuable. Yep. And when you think about it logically, it makes sense. Live sports are the only things that we gather communally to watch, that we, that we set a time to watch. Like we, I was trying to explain to my kids trying to get home in time to watch your favorite TV show at 8 p.m. on a Thursday. Like you, you don't do that anymore. But you do it for sports and you watch the commercials in sports. And that is the yep. only place you do that anymore. That is the only place I do it. All the shows that I watch are on streaming platforms. Like 100%. I don't watch anything that is right yeah. on TV anymore. I don't. Well, maybe channels. okay, maybe The Bachelor. But you know what I do? I watch it on UTV, YouTube TV, and I watch. I start late, so then I can skip the commercials. But that is the closest that I come to a non-sporting event that feels like I have to watch it live because I don't want it to get spoiled. I want to be part right. of the communal experience of. You want to tweet? You know the sports with, bar that is Twitter. Friends. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I, but that's it. I mean, we just don't see that. There's not really that kind of appointment television anymore, except in sports. And, yep. and I think that makes the biggest difference. Nicole, it was a very, very newsy day. We're going to pause a little bit. We're going to hear from Sling. We're going to hear from Run Your Pool. When we come back, we're going to talk about a very interesting letter that was sent out by the NCAA enforcement staff because <sighs> – I'm afraid the the big bad NCAA wolf uh, may have may have been defanged. It's college football season, which means you need Sling TV, where you can watch unbeatable college football coverage starting at just thirty five bucks a month. Get everything you love about college football, like rivalries, marching bands, conference power rankings, bowl games, you name it, all of it with Sling. Plus, Sling has all the big games on the biggest channels like ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN3, SEC Network, ACC Network, Big Ten Network, and Fox, all for the best price. And the best part is getting Sling is easy. It's easy to set up and even easier to use. You can stream on any device, record up to 50 hours with your included DVR space, and you don't get locked into a long-term contract. So if you're looking for the perfect place to spend your Saturdays, you need to take a look at Sling, where you can get everything you love about college football, for the best price. Check out sling.com for special offers. Sling, the live TV you love at a price you'll love. Try it today. If you listen to the show for a while, you know that Ari and I get pretty competitive when it comes to picking games during the season. Well, now you can join the competition. We've teamed up with Run Your Pool to host a pool for our show and our listeners as an opportunity to compete with us. So you'll get to compete with me with Ari, with Nicole Auerbach, with Sam Kahn, our tech expert, with Max Olson. And you can decide who's better at picking games against the spread. I know what you're thinking, Andy, you're not very good at this. Well, guess what? I have been working on it. I have been studying. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to improve. So you're going to have to work pretty hard to take me in our Run Your Pool pool. The way to do it, you go to play.runyourpool.com staples and sign up. While you're at it, you can start a few more pools for yourself and your friends. Run Your Pool isn't just college football, it's NFL, it's MLB, it's NBA, it's every sport you can imagine. And you can create pools that you and your friends can compete in, can talk trash in, and you know, listen, winner take all, and winner gets the bragging rights. And on our show, if you win, not only are there some prizes, there's some Fanatics gift cards to be won, but Ari has promised the winner a, a, a segment on the show. I, I don't even know if I've approved this, but it's going to happen. So Run Your Pool is the place to be for competition during this football season. If you want to compete with us, play.runyourpool.com slash staples. That's play.runyourpool.com slash staples. Join up and let's go. Welcome back. So we got a couple things to talk about with regard to power enforcement and what people are allowed to do. We're going to get to the, the UC regions, the University of California Board of Regents and UCLA and the Big Ten in a little bit. But first, Nicole, I want to talk about this thing that came out today. This is from the NCAA enforcement staff. It's from, from Stan Wilcox, uh, those who may know him as the former – oh, hi, Red Auerbach. Welcome to the show. For those who can't see, it's uh, yep. Red Auerbach is, is Nicole's dog, and uh, 
He is adorable, and, and he's joining the YouTube stream. So, uh, yes, yeah, Dan Wilcox, the Executive Vice President of Reg Regulatory Affairs, former Florida State Athletic Director. Nicole, this is the most desperate-sounding thing I have ever heard out of the NCAA <laughs> main office. Uh, I will not bore everyone with the entire contents of the letter, but I will start, with, I will start near the end. Investigations can be challenging, and the enforcement staff needs help from member schools. Specific information about contacts or transactions will expedite investigations and help us secure truthful accounts. They're talking about NIL deals here. We understand why coaches and student athletes are reluctant to provide documentary evidence details on the record, but it is critically important in our effort to protect compliant programs. Yes, players, please dime out all your friends for their NIL deals to the NCAA. There's a, a section earlier where basically they talk about how if you tell us, we won't tell anybody, but we'll also be totally transparent, but just with you, because we're not telling anybody. Nicole, what happened well, to these people? They used to be fearsome. Well, Andy, uh, reading between the lines here means that they're not getting much voluntary cooperation. They nope. are not getting people self-reporting issues, which is what they had been asking for. I mean, I remember in the spring, everyone wanted the NCAA to come out and and crack down on bad behavior. And they were saying, we need this is on you guys. We don't quite have the resources to just go investigate everyone we need. Uh, we're, they, they said, we're going to go look at potentially egregious examples of things that have happened. But this is forward, forward looking. And this is something we're not trying to punish the players. We're going to punish schools or coaches. They did coaches. say that. It's, it's a, you know, different infractions penalty process which is good because as we've seen so many times the the way that this takes so much time and the processes what ends up happening is the players who get punished are years later had nothing to do with anything so they are trying to say this is not going to penalize players i also think that that is the correct approach in this legal environment that they are in post alston so the issue is they don't have subpoena power never have and no one's really scared of ncaa violations anymore the the tide has totally turned public opinion has fully shifted and this is something that yes people think that other people are crossing line they don't think they are they think they're doing what they never. need to to keep up and you know i i don't know i mean how worked up are people going to get over players getting paid now I think people are very upset about recruiting inducements. They're upset about what is perceived to be pay for play. Well, no, they're but upset about recruiting inducements pay. when they don't get the player they want. Because obviously oh, the other yes. school Again, cheated. Only uh, their opponents are doing this. They are not. Their collectives are wholesome. Their collectives are doing things the right mm -hmm. way. Everyone else they have is a, not. They have a Bible study here, every here. Thursday at their collective. Yes, yes. <laughs> collective Bible study. So but here's the problem. So the NCAA didn't do anything for 10 months and everyone just continued to push the boundaries. And now they're saying, okay, if you, someone did something wrong, like report it back to us. And listen, like I get that that is an incredibly frustrating thing. I've talked to so many people on campuses. I've talked to two different athletic directors today who went on mini rants about how, you know, the, the numbers that get tossed around are inflated and not accurate. And then that affects what <laughs> players think they should be making and how, you know, there's no transparency around this and how there's a lot of things that are a mess, but they support the concept of NIL, which again, I, I believe, I believe that they believe that the problem is, you know, it's, it's just, it's been over a year now, no one's been penalized and it's just going to be really hard to get anyone to self-report themselves like voluntarily do this. It's also going to be very hard to prove. Yeah. I've always thought the best thing that the NCAA could prove, the most likely thing they could prove would be a collective or a booster in communication, talking to recruits, you know, doing things with recruits that you're not supposed to be having contact with them. But that's it. I don't think you're going to be able to prove. I can't say, Andy, I'm going to prove that you only picked Florida because you got money. You're going to tell yeah. me, no, it was, it's where I felt a family atmosphere. That's it's, right. I liked the coaches. Home. It was home that? when I came on my official visit, home. and they had a cookie cake in my in my hotel room. And, yeah. Yeah. I, it we're is going to be able to prove that one. Well, here's the other part. There's there's multiple states where high school players are allowed to do nil deals. 
you can't do anything to a collective that talks to a player in that state. If, if, if they're talking Good to point. a player in that state, there's nothing wrong with that. We're making a deal with this person who's allowed to do a deal. I think it's, I think we're up to 15 states allow high school players to do NIL deals. Kansas, just we talked about it on the show. Hard. Avery Johnson, the quarterback going to K State, he's from Kansas. He's got an incredible head of lettuce on him. He's doing deals. Again, I, the, to your point, though, about the lack of teeth, I mean, we've definitely been trending in that direction for some time. The idea of ooh, three NCAA violation has really changed. I will argue, and I said this to you earlier this week, I think Johnny Manziel and the autograph signing scandal was mm-hmm. a major public opinion shift in this, where people were like, he just won the Heisman. Why can't he yeah, do why this? Does anybody this seems care? ridiculous. Yeah. Why does anyone care? Why is he being penalized for signing his own autograph? And I think that at, around that time, media outlets also stopped doing the NCAA's homework for them. They stopped publishing these investigations into, quote, NCAA violations. Some of our friends over at S Nation actually did a big piece about why they specifically didn't with Todd Gurley when mm-hmm. someone tipped them off and said, well, and, and I was also one him. of the people tipped off on, on the Todd Gurley thing. And I can tell you what the conversations with the guy were like, because I, I went and found the guy later and did a story with him. And so, so he said the off the record stuff we talked about, we can talk about. And that was my thing. My thing was, and I, I remember having this conversation with him. I'm like, you're going to have me get Todd Gurley in trouble. I said, fine. If you want that, I will quote you by name in this story. And then you can deal with the repercussions of it as well. And then that, and the guy's like, well, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, then fine. I'm not doing anything. He ended up calling Georgia compliance. Todd Gurley gets suspended. At that point, I knew why Todd Gurley had been suspended so I could write the story. But I didn't want to write, I didn't want to get somebody in trouble because some anonymous guy who, by the way, had done a deal with the guy was trying to screw right. him at that point. And that, that shift in coverage, because people wrote about and reported on NCAA violations as if they were breaking the law. Actual crimes, and I think yes. Actual crimes. That was the language people used. That's the way people treated these things. And then I think people just realized, like, these are rules. These are arbitrary rules that an organization is imposing. And it's not our job to enforce that. It is not our job to tattle on people. We, and that sounds to say, we, I mean, obviously our site has covered, you know, the Tennessee case. and Because right, it, it affects the school and the team and the program. And you need to do yes, that. Yes, it affects the penalties, affect stuff. Coaches get fired or, or sanctioned because of these things. But people, I think, just stop doing their homework for them, to stop doing the NCAA is dirty for them. And I think also you had shifts in, you had a lot more different voices. You had people changing their minds about how they felt about athletes receiving payment while they were in school. And it's just a lot of things shifted. And you also have had this phase of the NCAA has never been weaker. We're in a process of deregulation. Mark Emmert is a uh, lame duck president right now. So when was the last time anyone listened to what the NCAA was, had to say? When was the last time the NCAA was proactive or led on an issue where there was, you know, bite with their words? Like, I, I don't know. It's been a long time. So it's just, it's an issue that they were not proactive on, that they let happen, that they let happen the last minute. So they said that basically they put their hands up and didn't have any rules around it. And... Now they're trying to ask people to, you know, out of the goodness of their own hearts to self-report or to tattle on other people. I just don't see why people would take that seriously. I, I, I'm with you. Nicole, there is a, a, a more, an organization that, that thinks it has more teeth. And we're going to find out whether it does or not. But there, on Wednesday, there was a very interesting exchange with the UC Board of Regents and UCLA. We're going to talk about that when we come back. A little sore today. A guy I know named Adrian Williams was putting me through something called Devil's Presses. You know what they are? Well, Adrian will show you if you're a member at Peloton, and you should be a member at Peloton. It's not just bikes and treads. It is a community of people who are there to help you 
reach your fitness goals. Adrian Williams, I, I had a run this morning with Andy Spear and another run with Marcel Dickens. These people all, they seem to know what buttons to push with me. And it's fantastic because there are times when I would like to dog it and I know they're not gonna let me. And then let's say I'm running on the treadmill, I can look and see how many other people are sweating through the same thing with me. And it really helps me to keep pushing. So go to onepeloton.com. They've got deals on the bikes and the treads for first time members and find a way to get yourself into this community because you will feel better about yourself. You will look forward to working out and you'll be able to work out anytime, anywhere with the motivation of world-class trainers and the knowledge that there are other folks doing the same thing you are on the same journey you are and you guys are going to make it and you're all going to look better and feel better. So go to OnePeloton.com and check it out. Welcome back. So uh, Stuart Mandel texted me about this, this UC Board of Regents meeting that he watched on Wednesday. And I believe the, the words he used were two hours of my life I'll never get back. But I do feel like the people there said that they made some threats that sound a lot more fearsome than what the, the NCAA enforcement staff was, was threatening. And it's basically two regents and then the general counsel for the regents are like, oh, we do grant authority to the president of our, of our campuses to make decisions, but that doesn't mean we gave it away permanently. Do you think there's anything the state of California that the, the, the regents can do to keep UCLA from joining the Big Ten? I would be curious what you've heard on this because I've asked that question, right? Like, can they actually block UCLA from joining the Big Ten? We know that lots of people are still very pissed off at UCLA. Right. We know that lots of people in the UC system, the, the governor of California, we know a lot of pe very prominent people are very pissed off still. It's been like almost two months. I, I guess like theoretically they could. That's what they're saying. They're saying they theoretically could block this deal. What I was told and what I was told to monitor this meeting was that they could just make life really miserable for UCLA. Right. People were saying that it's not out of the realm of possibility that they could be required to share revenue with Cal. Yeah. Like share Big Ten revenue with Cal, which that that would really suck for UCLA. Like part yeah. of the reason to make this move is the, the money, the financial security, the stability that would come with that. And then to have to share it with someone who's not even in that league, what does that mean? Uh, so that to me, that was what I was thinking as like the most severe penalty that could come mm -hmm. out of this. But I mean, these, these, these are threats, certainly. Are they veiled? I, I guess we'll see. Like we, we just don't know what is possible because we haven't really seen something like this play out and the California, the UC system is so unique. Mm -hmm. And I, I also thought that someone, so Stu also had mentioned to me that the meeting was kind of like a Parks and Rec scene where like anyone could speak. And so he was kind of hoping that there would be some entertaining moments. And there was someone who got up there and there was, they were like, well, why, are, why do we care about our rival? Why do we care about Cal's financial situation right now? Like, why do we, why should we care about that? Like, this is about UCLA. So there's also that, that sentiment as well in this process. Um, but yeah, I mean, they clearly think that they can that they can do this. They think they can block this move somehow. I don't think anyone else in college sports is operating under that assumption. I think everyone else is operating under the assumption that UCLA is going to be in the Big Ten in twenty twenty four. But I I do I would keep an eye on the revenue sharing or the financial piece because that was the way that someone put it that they could make life really really difficult for UCLA even if they don't yeah. or can't block the move. If I were Gene Block, if I were the, the chancellor of UCLA, I would go to each region and I would go to Gavin Newsom, the governor, and I would say, since you've decided you want oversight over, over my decisions, because this is what you said is, you know, this 1991 rule that said the president or the, the chancellor, the CEO on campus has the, has the final say in these decisions. Since you're saying that, that now you can take that back, Every decision that crosses my desk, I will not make until you decide if it's okay or not. So Gavin, I'm calling you every decision. If you're the president of your university, that's probably 75 decisions a day. Andy, we, we see, see how bad sounds. they want to make decisions at that point. 
<laughs> that also sounds like a plot from Parks and Rec. So I think that anything, anything that could be done that would be something that Ron Swanson would hate is an approach that someone could take in a situation that would probably work out your way. But so I, I think I'm going to be very interested to see how this all unfolds. I don't think it's done, obviously. But I, I do think that you're onto something. I think that, you know, picking and choosing when the leg- state legislature wants to get involved in something can be a slippery slope. But also in general, what are you going to, what are you going to be able to do in this situation? Everyone's just mad that UCLA did this in the cover of darkness. They're mm-hmm. mad that UCLA did this and didn't bring Cal along. They're bad that Cal wasn't part of this. This would not be happening if the move happened like overnight, like the news broke and became finalized in the same day. If, Cal was also included. Like oh. that's what this is about. That would solve this if if because there are those rumors out there. Oh, they're going to do a whole West Coast wing of the Big Ten, and they're going to bring Oregon, Washington, and Cal and Stanford into the mix too. That would solve this UC Regents problem. But I don't know that Fox and NBC and CBS would be all that excited about that. Right. I mean, it it definitely is something to think about. Um, I'm glad you said West Coast Wing. That is the language I have been floating around this. I feel like it just flows really well because of the WW alliteration. So that's the way, instead of a division, like a West Coast Wing. Um, So while we're on that, because I think everyone is wondering, you know, what the Big Ten may or may not do next in terms of expansion or just sort of next moves. Um, Also, if you hear some squeaking, that is red. He has a... Uh, it's like a duck toy. So, you know, Oregon, we can, we can say so he's chiming in my, about my Oregon. My dog Cookie just got a pig that you can hear from halfway across the house. So Red usually, like, squeaks out the squeaker. Like, it, it usually mm-hmm. dies. Um, but yep. this one appears to, I've never, I've honestly hadn't seen him play with this toy in, in months. And here he is with this, well, uh, with this duck he toy. Knows, he knows your podcast. So, he does. And again, I think it's, I think it's related to Oregon. But, okay, so this <laughs> is what... I have been told, you know, from folks in and around the Big Ten deal is the thinking on the West Coast wing is is pretty obvious because obviously it helps with the travel for, for USC and UCLA. I also think if we're talking, we, we open the show talking about TV windows and about how the Big Ten loves the fact that they have the Fox window at noon and they have CBS at 3.30 and they have NBC at night. Well, if you have let's say six teams on the West coast, you can have a meteorites package for 1030 Eastern games. Okay. And then you can go sell that. But yes, I mean, the, the overall concerns are still absolutely there. I mean, we we're talking about a lot of money, like 70 something million dollars per school in, in meteorites revenue. You got to bring people on that are really valuable that are going to be worth that. Otherwise you're asking people to essentially take a pay cut, even though we're talking about so much money. Um, you know, you're not going to have support for that. So I, I think that's, but then, you know, you have big 10 presidents that would love to be in a league with Stanford. Mm-hmm. Don't you think they would love to be with Cal? That's, also that's why I wrote problem. this when, when Texas and Oklahoma, when it, we found out they were going to the sec within a few days, I wrote a column saying the big 10 needs to raid the PAC 12 and the six schools I said they should take are USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington, Cal, Stanford. The, the, yeah. the reasoning behind Cal and Stanford was I didn't think Big Ten presidents could resist rubbing shoulders professionally with Cal and Stanford. I thought they, in terms of how, you know, what they feel their peer group is, that just makes them better in the eyes of their own peer group. Right. And so I think the, the, the benchmarks to, to know and to pay attention to with this is, Pac-12 is going through media rights negotiations. At some point, they will present something to their membership and ask people to sign and commit to each other. At that point, do those schools that we're talking about, the Pacific Northwest or the Bay Area, do they call the Big Ten and say, hey, it's now. It's got to be now or it's going to be six years from now. It's going to be eight right. years from now. It's going to be whatever that contract is. Um, does that force some sense of urgency? You know, I also, on, on, on Wednesday, I talked to Jack Swarbrick from Notre Dame. And, you know, he reiterated their stance, which is that the Big Ten having a contract with NBC is good for them because now they'll talk about Notre Dame and their Notre Dame rights. And then during Notre Dame games, they can talk about the Big Red Ten. And they can after it, by the way. He, he is. I'm going to show amazing. you. This. Okay, I want to see this. This is the, this is the. Oh, wow. This is the duck. 
Who knew Red was, was a hunting dog? Red Red weighs about four pounds, by the way, guys. So Red Red is Red is not like a. It's not like Smokey, the the Tennessee mascot. But he is actually exactly ten pounds. Like he is yeah. a uh, very small, very small Bijan Yorkie. Uh, very but he's getting though. after exactly. this duck like Smokey would get after a duck. He is. Again, I have not seen him go after this toy in months. I have this. This toy has been unused, ignored in the toy box for for months. But of course, right now is the time that he's looking at. But anyway, I, I think so. The Notre Dame question. Another thing that I asked Jack Swarbrick is: Our friends over at Sports Business Journal reported this week that Notre Dame could get in the ballpark of $60 million a year from NBC in its next deal. Because again, as we saw in the big 10 deal, live sporting events, games are very valuable. And if not more valuable going to be when, when Notre Dame steals up. And I asked, I asked him, I said, do you think that you guys will get enough financially to maintain independence? And he said, we hope so. So, okay. If Notre Dame thinks they can stay independent, um, if those Pac-12 schools sign a rights deal with the Pac-12, the ACC mm-hmm. schools, no one's challenging that grant of rights. That's right. how we stabilize. I think that's where you have the Big Ten and the SEC just stay at 16 for a minute. But there's lots of other scenarios and, and lots of people trying to read tea leaves to see where, where else this could go. I, I cannot wait to find out. It's, it's one of those things where we don't have much hard information right now, but I think you're right. There will be some inflection points where, where somebody's got to make a decision and that's where the next move will come. Our next move is we are going to talk about condiments. We're going to talk about yet another fantastic NIL deal. We talked about the coldest Crawford on, on, on the show with Max Olson the other day. When we come back, we're talking about Bijan's Dijon mustard. We'll be right back. In a tiny apartment in Southern California, two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all the rules with fair prices Unexpected colors and clean original designs, Movement grew into one of the fastest growing watch brands, shipping to over 160 countries worldwide. Now Movement has expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from screen, minimalist jewelry, and more style essentials that don't break the bank. And they're all designed in Movement's California headquarters. I've got the Raptor watch in Dark Star, and it is beautiful. It's one of those things that people see and they go, oh, well, where'd you get that? Well, I got it for movement and I didn't pay a fortune. I also have a movement card case that I turned into my cash carrying case because after the pandemic, I realized I'm not carrying cash anymore and sometimes I need to, but I don't want to have the George Costanza wallet. So I get this nice, clean look, clean lines. And then when I need to know what time it is, the Raptor in Dark Star. And people go, Ooh, I want one of those. And you say, If you want to elevate your look and style and don't break the bank, then join the movement and get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to MVMT.com slash Andy. That's MVMT.com slash Andy for 15% off today with free shipping and returns. MVMT.com slash Andy. All right, Nicole. There it is. Bijan Robinson's Bijan Mustardson. It's like a touchdown <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that part. Oh my God. This I mean, is I thought, incredible. I thought the coldest Crawford in the HVAC company was the best NIL deal. Quickly surpassed by Bijan Mustardson. What? No, no. The coldest is still my favorite. You, you know the coldest middle name, right? To ever do it. To ever do it it's not his middle name the coldest to ever do it Ma- max oh i believe Ma- it max olson max olson uh told a uh he, he was confessing on the show a couple days ago and he fell for that apparently and then passed it along what? and and he said he had to quickly delete the tweet because it was uh Someone was just having some fun, but apparently to ever do it is not the coldest his middle name i actually think the coldest should probably run and not walk to the courthouse and just change his middle name to that I'm extremely upset that that is not true. Okay. All right. Back to Bijan. This is incredible. And much like Decoldis, this is literal name, image, and likeness. Like this yes. is a play on your name in such a fun way. And I think my favorite part of these, first of all, I love that the players lean into it. 
But I love that there is a brand, that there is a company out there that greenlit this idea because it is amazing. And this photo that you are putting on our screen right now is clearly someone taking it at a grocery, at grocery store. store. This, is on, yes. this is on shelves. Yes. Yes. Now, Austin, the, uh, the home of Whole Foods, the birthplace of Whole Foods, it kind of looks like a bougie type of grocery store. So yes. if you want, if you want some Bijan Musterson, you might need to be a fancy person, but I, uh, I'm a big fan of all of mustards. I like the plain yellow. I like the stone ground. I like the Dijon. I like to change things up a little, you know, brown deli mustard every once in a while. I am probably going to buy some of this. I'm, I'm just saying it right now. Do they, where are they selling it? Is it only in Texas? That's a good question. It's a good know? question. That might be H-E-B, you know, for the, the, the real ones yeah. in Texas. Yeah. So it is, uh, it is truly amazing how quickly this all happened. This is remember it is we're in mid August. July 1st, 2021 was when this all went into effect. And right now we have a a the you know one of the best running backs in the country with his face on a mustard bottle that says it's like a touchdown in your mouth. By the way, I wanted to be at that marketing meeting. Are we really going to put this on a mustard bottle? Yes, yes we are. Andy, a lot of this show feels like we're talking about Parks and Rec, which is one of my all-time favorite shows. Does that make this us This feels like happily? something. We're, we're the media Perd, covering this. <laughs> Perd, Perd would cover this news, but I was thinking that this is something Tom Haverford would invent and sell. That would <laughs> yeah. That is a slogan that Tom Haverford would oh. come up with. Can, and can you see Aziz saying it's like a touchdown in your mouth as Tom yes. Haverford? Yes. Hundred percent, Jim Ra Gene Ralph Yeah, <laughs> yep. I feel like it's it's perfect for that like that little monologue of like apps and desserts. We could just like throw in the Bijan Mustardson in that conversation. But I love this so much. I really would like some. I feel like we need to taste test. I actually feel like I'm sure we have colleagues on our staff who hate mustard, and I feel like they're the ones we need to force to like scoop out. Yeah. It's like you and Mayo. Like someone needs to scoop yeah. out the Bijan mustard and put it in their mouth ari loves ketchup he doesn't hate mustard but he does prefer ketchup so maybe maybe if he loses a bet we make him eat an entire bottle of this or something there we go oh there we go but, i think that is so, very reasonable on the episode with max we had a discussion max thinks i should be the don draper of these these nil deals and i disagree i think i should be the pete campbell or the peggy olsen and that max is the don draper and he proved it again today uh, did you follow, speaking of Texas players, did you follow the, the situation with Ajayi Hall, the receiver there? Yes. Okay, so Ajayi Hall arrested for damaging a parking boot. He was, he was uh, the police accused him of swinging a tire iron at it, causing $600 worth of damage. So they arrested him for that. Max has already come up with an NIL deal for Ajayi Hall. Are you ready for this? He's already written the commercial. I'm telling you, Max. Let's is go. In the wrong Let's hear it. Work. Let's hear it. Paying $600 for boots. Now that's a crime. Come on down to Cavenders and enjoy our great selection of affordable boots plus free parking. <laughs> oh my God. Ma Max is it wasting is his time working for us. <laughs> I was just going to say it's a shame that that was given away for free. <laughs> what a gift. What a gift. But that is. That is a tremendous NIL deal to coldest Bijan Mustardson. Let's, let's make it happen. I, I will say I recorded an interview that we're going to run next week uh, with Grant Furking, who is a Tennessee walk-on. For those who don't know, David Oven wrote a story about him a few years ago. He's actually the CEO of his own company uh, and has been since 15 years old. He's been helping teammates with, with deals. I do think he helped create the best NIL deal in the country because – it does help the fans more. So Moonshine Mountain Cookie Company in Knoxville, these are un, these are like those, you've seen all those places where they do the like the four inch thick cookie. That's what this place yeah. is. So he had a deal last year where if Alante Taylor intercepted a pass, you didn't even need a ticket stub from the game. Like if Alante Taylor intercepts a pass, you could walk into the store and get two free cookies. Now, if Cedric Tillman catches two touchdown passes in a game, you walk into the store and get two free cookies. It's the greatest, greatest deal ever. Like Cedric Tillman 
If I lived in Knoxville, even if I hated the Vols, Cedric Tillman would be my favorite player in the world. I love that. It reminds me of, I feel like we had a minor league ballpark when I was growing up where, you know, like if somebody hit a home run in the sixth inning, everybody got pizza, like a free yeah. small pizza, whatever the local pizza place was. But I, I love it. this. This is, this is the good stuff about NIL. We were talking about collectives and all this, like, you know, people getting upset about stuff. This is the stuff we love. Yeah. This, this is the stuff you're like, they fought against this for how long? And I realized they were fighting against the coldest, the coldest yes. and on air conditioning and an HVAC company. Like that's a dream. That's a dream. It's, it's my NIL dream was to see that commercial. Nicole, I have a feeling that there are a lot of companies that are rolling out NIL related products and they're timing it up to the start of football season. You do realize we're going to be deluge of this stuff in, for the next two weeks. As long as it's fun or funny. I won't get tired of it. All right. Out there, listener land, if you can get me a bottle of Bichon mustard, and I'll pay for it. Just figure out how to get it for me and get it to me. Yeah. I want to try this stuff. I Do want it. a touchdown in my mouth. <laughs> I can't Nicole. respond to that. I don't have anything. I don't have anything. <laughs> we, we, we've, got, we've got to leave it there. We've got to leave. It's been a wonderful week. Ari and I will be back together. Very soon, probably on Monday, we have a lot to talk about. We, he might have to eat a whole bottle of mustard, and I'm all right with that. But thank you so much, Nicole. It has been a pleasure, and have a nice weekend. Have a touchdown in your mouth. <laughs> the show is brought to you by Sling TV, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Check out sling.com for special offers.